three years of painstaking work by an incredible diversity of tradesmen and craftsmen under the direction of dedicated architects can at last be viewed in all its magnificent detail. The original plans prepared by the colonial architect Charles Tiffin in 1864 included this porte cochere. His descendants could not fail to be pleased with the accurate way in which the new has been linked to the old and with the selection of special light fittings to reflect this early period. From a practical viewpoint, it means that parliamentarians and visiting dignitaries can now enter the house during the most inclement weather in comfort. Special timbers were selected for the parquetry flooring in this area, which repeats the geometric pattern of the original handmade encaustic tiles. The base of the columns in the entrance lobby were decorated to represent Winard marble. At this stage, the vein formation is being created with special brushes and goose feathers. The main entrance stairwell is dominated by this glorious stained glass window depicting the royal coat of arms and the reigning monarch of the time. The original specification called for one stained glass window of Queen Victoria, Renaissance style, circular headed, priced not to exceed ten and sixpence per foot. The beautiful chandeliers and wall lights were made in Ireland by the renowned Waterford Crystal at a cost of over $30,000 each. Queensland became Australia's only unicameral parliament when the council was abolished in 1922. Since then, this room has been used as the venue for formal functions such as investitures and special occasions including the welcome to the Queen in 1982 and to Singapore's Prime Minister Mr Lee Kuan Yew. One of the most impressive features of the Legislative Assembly Chamber is the Speaker's rostrum. The gilded Corinthian columns and coffered panels of the canopy heighten the importance of the area and improve the acoustics. These 
modern air conditioning amenities have been installed in a relatively unobtrusive manner and together with the new fire detection system will prevent any damage to the structure. The Hansard reporters are stationed directly above the speaker's rostrum and are within touching distance of this distinctively decorated ceiling with fine gold leaf detail. Careful paint scrapings were taken to detect the original colours and the new colour combinations evoked the original 1868 scheme without being an exact copy. The clean, fresh effect of this renovated area is the result of the removal of up to 20 layers of paint, expert repairing of damaged walls, remodeling of delicate plaster ornamentation, and the skillful application of modern coatings. Special techniques were needed to conceal the essential services such as water, gas and electricity within the 113 year old walls of this building. Perfectly proportioned bar stools, distinctively designed fittings, Picturesque parquetry flooring and delicately patterned ceiling decorations are undoubtedly the reasons why this is one of the most frequented rooms in the house. This essential facility has been given a touch of exclusivity by the fittings selected. New cedar panelling, hand printed wallpaper and expertly chosen lighting create the relaxed atmosphere of a very dignified club. The tiles on this floor have been removed from other rooms within the building, cleaned in acid to remove a century of dirt and discoloration, then laid out to see what pattern could be created within the limited number of reusable tiles. Quarry tiles have been used around the edge of the floor, but the major portion has been covered with these reconstituted tiles.
Strictly functional colours have been selected here to achieve maximum light reflection whilst the reporters work in air-conditioned comfort. It is impossible to detect where the deep moulded cornice has been expertly repaired after a workman fell through the ceiling. The restoration of this historic building has returned it to its original gracious and elegant character, and the completed project provides a functional parliamentary complex of which all Queenslanders can be justly proud.